In this video, we're gonna show you, we have a used 40 foot shipping container here and the door down at the bottom is all damaged. We could repair this door, but we found this is a great opportunity to remove this door. We have a brand new door kicking around, so we're gonna install that instead. We're also gonna give you a rough idea on what this is gonna cost and let you follow along as we tackle the problem and show you all of the cool parts that we have available that make this job a lot easier than it otherwise would be. What we're doing here is we have a used container. So this container is 10 plus years old. And then we're taking a brand new door and installing it on here. So here on this door, uh, looks like probably a forklift or something has pushed a fork right in and damaged the entire bottom of this door. The door is still sagging. And even the footer of this container here is actually torn. So we'll see if we can pull that back out and do a new weld on that corner casting. It's still kind of nice and level and would seal up even if that wasn't repaired. Biggest problem here is the door. So what we're gonna do is cut this door right off. And the way to do that is we take a, a zip disc, your thinnest one, I think it's 045 or 16th of an inch. And we'll run that right between the hinge and the keeper on the door frame and just cut the pin out of the door, actually I have one right here. So there's a cold rolled 12 mil pin that's welded on both sides. Big thing to note here, super safety concern is that you need to have the levers closed. So have the door uh, latched shut when you do this. Then when you do cut those and you're ready to drop it, you have a second set of hands. Two people will open this up, lay the door down and safely get it out of the way. Where are you gonna get a set of doors if yours are damaged? And so if you find other The Container Guys, just like us in your local area that modify shipping containers, odds are they've done a mod where they've chopped some container doors off and they will sell them too. Some people have tons of them laying around. Others, it's a bit more of a rare commodity. So I think you could budget paying between 100 to $500 for a set of doors and then we do sell the hinge butts with the hinge pin, the whole package, and then that's gonna get you uh, set up to perform this R&R very easily. The beauty about using these new hinge butts is that if you find a door and your hinges aren't in the exact spot of where the old door was, it doesn't matter. With these, uh, if you had a hinge right here, you can just cut into this. This just welds right on the corner casting and now your hinges can be anywhere. Another thing to note here is that you also have uh, door keepers. And this is potentially more important is that your new set of doors, you wanna make sure that they are in the same spot. And one thing you'll notice here is that this is an older container and it's got the, the dual lock rods where the new container has the single handle door lever, which is a lot easier to open and close, but it's gonna render the, the keepers closest to the hinge side useless. So uh, we're hoping everything there lines up. Okay. Now it's time just to uh, get the hinge butts and the hinge pin lined up and in the door. Yeah, you line up the hinge pin or the hinge butt. It's super important. It's offset one way. You don't want to do it the wrong way because that gives extra clearance and allows for the door to fully close and swing open. You want the flat side to the hinge side and the offset towards the door. And so we'll get this lined up. The tolerances are pretty tight, so we actually have to pound the pin in. Then we just finish it with the punch. And so now we got about half the material thickness in the top and the bottom, and we'll be able to just plug that with weld. And then when you do cut the slot for your hinges, you can be pretty exact here, so you don't have a bunch of uh, welding and filling to do there. So now that we have the uh, hinge pins and hinge butts on all four of the hinges on the door, we're gonna plug weld top and bottom, have that all done, so that when we lift the door up to the container, that's already finished. Okay. I'm actually latched. Kind of, uh oh. We're gonna look like idiots. 
That is not the easy button. So we're catching the, the bottom there and the top there. Uh, we figured out that the top one's actually fine if we go up with the door, which we see we have to do with the hinges, and that's gonna sit nice in that keeper up there. But this bottom one is definitely too low, so we need to either cut it off and, and weld it up higher, or it could be potentially because this footer is damaged and pushed in that it's actually kind of pulled itself downwards. So we're gonna remove this door, address this issue, and then try holding it back up and hopefully we got it in the right spot. So before you make any extreme modifications to the, uh, the keepers or anything by cutting them off and moving them, you wanna make sure that your doors are nice and square uh, and the container is kind of sitting where it needs to be. And I can tell that on this container it's not because you see where it typically normally rides on the boat? Uh, this is, you know, a quarter inch down. So what this is telling me is on the left hand side of the can, we need to get our container jacker under there, lift this thing up so that the door seal is sitting up to where it kind of wants to be. And then once we get it to a place where it should be, then we can start installing the other door. Don't do that ahead of time because if you start making modifications and you're not even sitting level anyway, you're just uh, constantly chasing your tail. Uh, as you solve one problem, you're creating another one. So since we made a significant adjustment by jacking up the one side, we're gonna hold this door up again and uh, see how everything's lining up. You never know, maybe it'll actually latch now for us. So we don't wanna make any changes prior to testing it out one more time. And we are smarter this time. We got a third set of hands here. So Matt, William and I will lift this thing up right now. You wanna grab here? So yeah, as you can see, this is not for the faint of heart. Uh, there's three of us here. We're all kind of working together, problem solving, trying to get this door to go in. That's why a lot of times I don't suggest swapping out your container doors. Uh, often it's easier, you know, weld them shut, and put a roll up door in the other end if they don't work or remove the doors and install like a, a roll shutter door or a roll up door in the door end because if you're not the container guy and you're not dealing with this stuff every day and you're not good at problem solving, you don't have two helping hands, this, this is a big job. I feel like we're closer than we were before anyway. What about that pry bar mat? That... Oh, it don't fit. What don't? The keepers. Hitting? Are narrow. Yeah, we were before too. By like a quarter inch or something. Or about that. So we've confirmed our suspicions and we're gonna keep the top keeper because that's gonna lift the door up. If you see a gap here, we'd like to close that up, be about half and half. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the bottom keeper off. Uh, that's gonna leave us with only the top left keeper because it's a single handle door and it doesn't use the, the right one. Anyway, let's try this again. We're gonna lift her up one more time. Hopefully this is good. Uh, get it locked in the top keeper. If that works, we'll weld that bottom one back on. So here we go. Yeah, look at that. Keep going. Need help? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's actually sitting in there nicer than we expected. Uh, now that the one is out, we can grab this here. Yeah, okay, there you go. Yep, come back in. Like a glove. This is the moment of truth here. We have all the hinge butts tacked in place and we've retacked the uh, the bottom keeper in place. So we're just gonna try to open up this door. Hopefully nothing falls here and everything's working properly. That door seal's sitting nice and tight there. Seems to be swinging pretty good. We'll just see if it closes back up. Oh yeah, pretty tight seal. So I think we're happy with where this is sitting. Now it's just, uh, we'll let William finish welding it all up. 
And so here we got the container out of the shop. You can see that we've added a coat of paint on the doors just so that it matched the rest of the can. It's not tan and doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. The left door of this container also had a bit of damage. So we removed the bottom door seal. We had to cap the underside of the door and weld in some new material there. And then we reinstalled some door seal to make sure that it closed up and sealed up nicely. Just to give you an idea on how this thing works here. It opens up nicely. Yeah, that's basically it. That's how we either replace a container door or repair container doors. And if you enjoyed this video and got value from it, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to our channel and ring that bell for notifications or check us out at tcg.ca. Hope you learned something.